Let's get to work. Let's use the change of variables formula to solve a challenging integral that you may have run across before. I don't know, maybe back in the old days of single variable calculus, we're going to talk about thermodynamics. We're going to look at a simple idealized four stroke engine. And you don't need to know anything about thermo, but I'm going to tell you a thing or two about work. There are four strokes in an ideal engine cycle. The first is the combustion stroke, otherwise known as isothermal expansion. Next is the power stroke, where the piston is being pushed out. This is also called isentropic expansion. Next comes the exhaust stroke, where the piston starts coming back in. That's isothermal contraction. And last but not least, the compression stroke or isentropic contraction. And you repeat these four strokes over and over. And in an idealized engine, you get something really cool. You get that the amount of work that is done over a single cycle of the engine is equal to the area that is traced out by these four stroke curves in the PV plane, in the plane where you plot volume versus pressure. Now, I've got these four different strokes, and they are defined in terms of pressure and volume as follows. Isothermal expansion is P times V is a constant, let's say A1. Next, isentropic expansion is P times V to the gamma equals a constant. B1, where gamma is some constant bigger than one that's based on the type of gas you're using. Okay, the isothermal contraction is again P times V equals some other constant, A0, and isentropic contraction is PV to the gamma equals B0. Now it's helpful to plot all four of these curves on the PV plane, plotting pressure as a function of volume. And you can think in terms of what happens when the volume is, is increasing and the pressure goes down, or the volume is decreasing and then the pressure goes back up. And these four strokes, these four curves in the PV plane trace out a, a region, a sort of a nonlinear kind of quadrilateral shape. And here's the fact from thermodynamics, the area of that unusual looking shape is something you want to know about. It's the amount of work that is done over a single cycle in your idealized or Carnot engine. So, okay, so we want to compute that area, but it's not so easy to compute. You might be able to do it using single variable calculus, but it's kind of a pain. Wouldn't it be nice if some of the things that we've been learning would be helpful in computing that? And well, it's kind of obvious that there's a change of variables that would make this region so nice. We should use what we are given. But instead of calling these new variables u and v, since v is already taken, let's call them, oh, I don't know, t and s. So we're going to let t be equal to p times v, s be equal to p times v to the gamma, giving us in the st plane a perfect rectangle. Now, of course, these uh, variables are physically meaningful. T is a proxy for temperature, and S is a proxy for the entropy of the system. You don't need to know anything about that, but if you take a thermo class, then this is going to make a lot more sense to you. Okay, so we have our coordinate transformation. T is P times V. S is P times V to the gamma. Now that we've got that in place and our limits of integration are going to be nice, let's set up the actual integral. So what do we do? For the change of variables theorem, I'm going to have to start taking some partial derivatives. When I take the partial with respect to the first input, that's v, what do I get? I get uh, p and then gamma times pv to the gamma minus 1. When I take the partial derivatives with respect to the second input, p, I get simply v and v to the gamma. Now, taking the determinant of this gives me, let's see, uh, pv to the gamma minus gamma times pv to the gamma. That's 1 minus gamma times pv to the gamma. But 
don't forget the absolute value. Now, the first thing I notice is that PV to the gamma is the same as S. And to take care of that absolute value, I need to recall that gamma is bigger than one. And so I can drop the absolute value signs, but I need to switch and look at gamma minus one. Okay, so what do we have? We have dt ds equals gamma minus one times PV to the gamma or S times dV dp. But we need to go the other way. We need to compute volume or rather area in the PV plane. So what do we do in this case? I'm gonna solve for dV dp, that area element, as dt ds divided by gamma minus one times s. That's going to allow me to compute area in the PV plane really easily. So setting up the work as the area of this region, as the double integral of the area element dv dp, I get the integral of dt ds divided by gamma minus 1 times s. As t goes from a0 to a1, s goes from b0 to b1, that integral is trivial, dt goes to t, and ds over s goes to log of s. When I substitute in for the limits of integration, I get a final answer that's really clean. It is a1 minus a0 divided by gamma minus 1 times the log of b1 divided by b0. And that's as easy an integral as we could hope to do. Thank you. Change of variables theorem.